At Tenwick, we have a symbiotic relationship with our chaplains. The chaplains join us on rounds. They see our patients pre-op and post-op. It's integral to what happens. It's, they're not separate. And because again, we're treating the whole person. For example, our nurse anesthetists, they won't let me put a patient to sleep. They won't participate in putting them to sleep who haven't heard the gospel that Jesus loves them. L. Nelson Bell, Chaplaincy School, serving Christ at the bedside and beyond. In 1991, we were wondering how to start the Chaplaincy School. And there was a foundation related to Ruth Graham. That foundation supported us. There was a need to have two, three. We are now 12. So the idea came in, we don't want to be selfish. Let us train other chaplains so that we can send them to other hospitals to teach the gospel. By now, we have trained over 200 chaplains, and that is wonderful. The areas covered by the chaplain ministry are mostly the witnessing, and then the other one is the ministry of counseling, because patients here come with emotional needs. I've served in this hospital since February 1998. This is where we get people connected to God. Sometimes I don't think that I have done much. But years later on, I meet this person saying, do you know what happened during that time? I wasn't crying, but I saw Christ in, the, in my life as you are ministering. Reverend Elijah B. came to me with pain in his chest. It turned out he had a massive aneurysm of his aorta, which needed urgent repair. At that point in time, we had not yet started full-time cardiac work. I said, I don't honestly have the supplies or the equipment, the personnel to do this. We will in about six weeks, so let's plan your operation for then. Of course, his question to me was, could this rupture in the meat? I said, yeah, it could. And if it does, you'll, you'll see Jesus like that. I became a recipient of the services of this hospital. And this was a very, very dangerous thing for one to go through. And I look back to it and I say, God added me some more years. He's our head chaplain today. He relates with our patients in such a tremendous way to say to them, I understand what it's like to not know if you're gonna live or not, but I also understand that God is able to undertake in all these areas. He and his team work with our patients every single day. I cannot imagine how we could get to where we are without the help of Samaritan's Pass. The Bible that we receive, that we give out to the patients, they all come from the Samaritan's Pass. In this way, the gospel has gone very far. Chaplaincy ministry is not an end in itself. It is part and part parcel of spreading the gospel. Each one of those souls that we are saying now came to know Christ. It is because of the ministry that you did as the Samaritan's past. They have been very strong partners when it comes to the spiritual ministry. <laughs>